At this time, it's a pleasure to call our first speaker, Dr. Deborah Williams. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm thankful and grateful to be here and to give all honor and glory to God for the Messiah, our Savior King. And thankful to be here to learn of these mysteries. Because this is a great mystery. Our topic is what and where is the true church. Now you've got a lot of churches out here. You've got a, a lot of denominations out here. You've got a lot of doctrines out here. You've got the Church of God in Christ. You've got AME -M -E Avenue. You've got St. Peter's Basilica. You've got a mosque. You've got a temple. You've got all type of churches and they're all great and mortal. And they all tell us that this is the place. They all say, come on. This is the place that you come to worship. But now we're going to have to be obedient and go to the scriptures and see what the scriptures say the true church is. Can I have Colossians um, 1, um, 1 and 12? Colossians 1 and 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the sons in light, uh -huh. who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, right. in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, even the forgiveness of sins, who is, who is the image of the invisible El, the first cause of all creation. Uh -huh. I want you to jump down where it says that the church is his body. Mm -hmm. Colossians 18, 118. Oh, Colossians 118. And he is the head of the body, the assembly, who is the beginning, the firstborn from all dead, from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence among all. Okay. Now he is the head of the body, the assembly. And when we look up the word church, the word church means congregation or assembly. Now he is the head which is his body. Now, to say that is one thing, but to prove it, according to the scriptures, Isaiah 8, 20, is something different. We should be able to go into the scriptures and see this repetitiously over and over and over again. Isaiah 8, 20. This is Isaiah 8, 20. To the law and to the testimony. Okay, to the law. That's the first five books in your Bible. And to the testimony. That's the prophets. From uh, Joshua on down to Malachi. Go here. If they speak not according to this word. If they speak not according to this word. That means any spirit or anybody that says they have a church. If they speak not according to this word. Go ahead. And it is. Go ahead. It is because there is no light in them. It is because there is no light in them. And we just read in Colossians that he delivers us from the powers of darkness. He said that he is the light of the world. Now when we, when I first came into this school, in the world they said that the word was the Bible. They call the word the Bible. But it wasn't until I came into this work, into the school that I found out that the word using the true names and the true titles, 1 John 1 and 1, 1 John 5 and 7. What the word really is. And to understand what the word really is, if they speak not according to this word, there's no light 
in him. Then I'm on John 14, 26. And John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with Yahweh. And the Word was with Yahweh. And the Word was Yahweh. And the Word was Yahweh. So what it is is that we have Yahweh in this abstract state that's incomprehensible, inscrutable, inscrutable. He moves into a, sh a set, shape and form in part, not in totality, known as the Word or Son. This is Yahweh Elohim. And I didn't know that until I came into this story. Because the Father's name is Yahweh. The word or son is Elohim, and the Holy Spirit is Yahshua, the Messiah. Go here. And the word was made flesh. 14. 1 and 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Right. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. So now we got John, first John 5 and 7. Out of the came down. This is 1 John 5 and 7 out of the King James Version. Mm -hmm. For there are three that bear for there are three that bear record in heaven. Right. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Right. And these three are one. These three are one. See, this is not, this was not God's little boy. This was the Creator Himself. The Word made flesh manifested in a body and walked the earth on And he came here on a mission. His mission was to fulfill. Okay? Give me a... Um, so we're going to be obedient. Go back to the law and the prophets. John 5, 39. This is John 5, 39. Ye search the scriptures, mm -hmm. for in them you think you have eternal life, mm -hmm. but they are they which testify of me. They are they which testify of him. Now we're going to go back there. We're going to be obedient, and we're going to go back there to see just what the first church was. Give me a beginning and more. Well, he expounded us, uh, expounded unto them all things concerning himself. This is Luke 24, 25. Mm -hmm. And he said, O oh, fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. This is after he had resurrected, and this is him on the road to Emmaus. Go ahead. Uh, not the Messiah to have suffered these things and entered into his glory. Mm -hmm. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Now it says, now at beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in the scriptures concerning himself. So they're going to be obedient to what the word said and go back here to Moses. And why Moses? Because Moses was the first one to know his name. Moses was the first one to receive a vision. Actually, the book of Exodus comes before the book of Genesis. But then that's another mystery in itself. Moses saw a vision when he was up here in the mount. But when we go back here and we look at the children of Israel, there was a promise given to Abraham that the seed would have to come down. That there was a promise given to Abraham that in his seed, all families of the earth would be blessed. But first his seed would have to come down and sojourn in, a land of, in the land of uh, Egypt. And Yahweh said, well, told him to say, well, he would surely come and visit him. So the children of Israel was down here for some 400 years. Some 430 years. Okay, they're down here in the land of Egypt. Moses is called out. He kills an Egyptian. He goes up into the wilderness of Sinai and he sees Yahweh in a burning bush. Yahweh gives him his name and commissions him to go back down into the uh, into the land of Egypt and tell the children of Israel, I tell the Egyptians to let his people go. Now was a prescribed way that they had to come up out here. See, when Moses came back down here, there was 10 devastating plagues poured out on the land of Egypt. Now, for them to come out, the Passover was instituted. They was told to take a lamb. It had to be without spot or blemish. Take other blood. 
strike it on the upper lip, upper door post, two side posts, dip from a face in the blood. They had to eat that lamb. The deaf angel passed over their house. And it was through this, the eating of this Pascal lamb, which testified to Yahshua the Messiah, because John said, Behold, the lamb of Yahweh that, that take up away the sins of the world, the four points of blood on this door pointed to the four points of blood, the crown of thorns, uh, nails in the left and right hand, nails in the feet. This lamb was pierced in the side. This lamb was pierced. The true lamb was pierced in the side. This is how they came up out of the land of Egypt. They come up out of the land of Egypt, go through the divided waters of the Red Sea, and they follow a cloud. They come out into the wilderness. Give me Exodus 9, 19 and 10. Exodus 19 and 10. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Go unto, unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes mm -hmm. and be ready against the third day. They had to be ready against the third day and they also had to wash. Go ahead. For the third day, Yahweh will come down in the sight of all the people among, upon Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take, ye, take heed to yourselves that mm -hmm. ye go not up into the mount, right. or touch the border of it. Mm -hmm. Whosoever touches the mountain shall be surely put to death. Right. So now you got the children of Israel. They are gathered around this mount. He thunders down the Ten, Command the Ten Commandment law to them. Them gathered around this mount was the first congregation or assembly or the first church. Mm -hmm. right. This was a body of people gathered around this mount. And it was gathered around to hear what thus saith Yahweh. He spoke from this cloud, and I'm going to tell you something, them gathered around there, if we had walked back, we wouldn't have seen nothing. That was a vision that they saw in the confines of their mind. So, that they heard in the confines of their minds. See, just like that was the head talking to the body, just like we have a head that dictates, dictates to this body. Romans 119 and 20. See? This is Romans 119 and 20. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. Mm -hmm. For Yahweh has shown it unto them. Showed it to them. Mm -hmm. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Being understood by the things that are made. Now I want to pick up something. We should be able to go back into the scriptures and see a head and a body. Give me Genesis 2 and 21. Because remember, they came up by the blood of the man. They went through the divided waters of the Red Sea. And they followed a cloud that's setting up something that's a death, a burial, and a resurrection. When Moses was out here in the mount, was up here. When he went into the mount, he actually did three trips into the mount. The second time that he went into the mount, he was given, he was in the mount for 40 days. He saw the creation of heaven and earth and six solar days. He saw Yahweh on him rest on the seventh. And the remaining 33 days, he was receiving instructions on how to make this tabernacle pattern. Now this pattern is vitally important. This pattern consists of a court round the mount, a holy place, a most holy place. It also dictates death, burial, resurrection, ascension. See, just says it controls that migratory track. Them coming on up out of Egypt, going into, they went according to this tabernacle, going into the land of uh, receiving their inheritance in the land of Canaan and the Messiah. Also, went by this tabernacle, him being the high priest. Continue. Genesis 2 and 21. 
And Yahweh Elohim caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. That's a death. And he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh and stead thereof. Mm -hmm. And the rib which Yahweh Elohim had taken from the man mm -hmm. made him... Went into the side. Mm -hmm. He went into the side and took that rib from Adam. Go ahead made he a woman and brought her unto the man and made him a woman and brought her unto the man so now adam in the garden as we read in colossians i want to back up adam in the garden as we read in colossians it said that he was given preeminence just as adam in the garden was given dominion over all the creatures all created creatures now. He was given dominion in the garden. So they are there to testify Yahshua the Messiah, the serpent. They was in the garden in a peaceful state. The woman was presented to him. They're in a peaceful state and then a third party enters the garden. And that third party is what caused Eve to be Deceit. Okay? The serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. He comes in, he causes Eve to be deceived. So when Adam all die, mm -hmm. and in the Messiah, all is made of mine. Give me a the first man Adam was a living soul, and the second Adam. Moment. I want to go into how he went into the side and created Eve and presented Eve as the Messiah. This lamb was pierced in the side and as the soldiers, when he hung on the cross, was pierced, came to him after he died. Because couldn't a bone be broken to him and pierced him in the side and forthwith came blood and water. Go ahead. Can I start at 44 first? This is 1 Corinthians 15, 44. It is sown a natural body. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body. There is a natural body. And there is a spiritual body. And there is a spiritual body. So it is written. So it is written. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. First uh, Corinthians 15, 44 and 45. So what we have here is the Messiah's death, burial, and resurrection. And when he dies, Matthew 27, 52. And when he dies, as, the, as Eve was presented to, the, to Adam, when Adam was put in that deep sleep, and he went into the side and presented that woman to Eve, they are, I mean Adam, they are there to testify of him. So Adam, so the Messiah, through his death, his burial, and his resurrection, when he resurrects, he's the first one, first fruits of them that resurrect, as Adam was created first, and then Eve, representing the body of the church, follows, just as his body follows after his resurrection. Go ahead. Matthew, Matthew 27, 52. Mm -hmm. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the sons which slept arose. Mm -hmm. and, and those are those that died, because couldn't nobody resurrect until the Messiah came on the scene. So those are the ones that died in faith, believing. Because they were told that they would be saved by childbirth. Believing that a Redeemer would come. So the three days and the three nights that was, he was in the heart of uh, earth, he was preaching unto the captives. And those that believed resurrected with him. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And came out of the graves after his resurrection. After his resurrection. Mm -hmm. And went into the holy city and appeared unto many. And went into the holy city and appeared unto many. So we could see, we could go back there and see that it is jot and tittle as Eve was his bride or she represents the church we got the Messiah resurrected and the captives resurrected with him 
That's his bride or his church, the children of Israel, coming out of the land of Egypt, gathered around in this, this mount, the first congregation or assembly or the first church. It's repeating itself over and over and over again. Also, I'm on the revelations with the woman clothed in the sun. So he's bringing us back from where Adam fell. He's bringing us back because see, as long as Eve was in Adam, she was okay. She was okay. Did no harm. Come on. Okay, this is Revelation 12 and 1 in the King James Version. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, mm -hmm. a woman clothed with the sun mm -hmm. and the moon under her feet, mm -hmm. and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Mm -hmm. And she being with child, proud, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. Mm -hmm. One more. Okay. Now, we can see. We want to go back to this tabernacle. I'm going to first go ahead and 6, 18, 19, and Colossians 1, 26. So since we can see that it's his body, now we want to know where he resides and where we go to worship him. That's right. Acts 2 and 1. 1 Corinthians 6, 18, 6, 19. Because this tabernacle also represents our body. We were fashioned after this tabernacle. We are head cavity, chest cavity, abdominal cavity. This is this is a most holy place. Ark of the covenant. Three in one configuration, holy place, and a court roundabout. We correlates beautifully with this physical body. First Corinthians 6, 18, 19. This is first Corinthians. 619. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Now what know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? When the Messiah walked the earth plane, he said, tear this temple down. And in three days he will raise it up. Then he said, but that spoke he of his body. So this body, this body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Colossians 126, verse John 4 and 4. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit which is in you, mm -hmm. which ye have of Yahweh, and ye are not your own? Ye are not your own. For you are bought with a price. We were bought with the precious blood of Yahshua the Messiah. Go ahead. Therefore glorify Yahweh in your body and in your spirit, which are his. Place to worship. Mm -hmm. Right within here. Mm -hmm. Right within here. That's right. mystery among the nations, mm -hmm. which is the Messiah in you, the hope of glory, mm -hmm. whom we preach, warning every man. Okay, and that's, that, that's it. The Messiah in you, your, your only hope is the glory. First John 4 and 4, Acts 2 and 1, and Acts 2 and 42. Because how you receive this gift is through the preaching of the gospel, through the preaching of the death, burial, and resurrection according to the scriptures. Going back, because when you go back there, you're going to see that it overturns and overturns and overturns. See, if you don't get it here, you get it there. This is First John 4, 4. This is John 4.24. Yahweh is spirit, mm -hmm. and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. Acts 2 and 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord and in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like an unto fire. And he had promised that he would send a comfort. And this is the Holy Spirit filling their tabernacles 
back there in that upper room. And they began to speak as the Spirit, John 14, 26, as the Comforter, who is the teacher, they began to speak as the Spirit gave them utterance. Drop down to uh, 242. This is Acts 4, uh, 242. And they continued steadfast in the apostles' doctrine. In the apostles' doctrine. Mm -hmm. And fellowship. First Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. The apostles' doctrine. Mm -hmm. And they continued in the apostles' doctrine. Well, really, it wasn't their doctrine. Because mm -hmm. they preached the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahshua, the Messiah, according to the scriptures. Mm -hmm. We have to continue in that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, continue and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers. And breaking of bread and in prayers. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I won't go ahead and say they, uh, they went from house to house. Because see, that's what okay. we're doing down here now. And they, see, when the Holy Spirit is in a vessel and it's get up and he gets up and it's preaching, that's the breaking of bread. This is the fellowship. Mm -hmm. This is the fellowship. Mm -hmm. This is the nourishment of the body. Yeah. And that's why we come down here. 46 verse. And they continually daily with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread from house to with, house. Mm -hmm. With one accord. Right. In the temple. What temple? Mm -hmm. This temple. Mm -hmm. yeah. Going from house to house. Mm -hmm. See, you got a little thing? You got a little thing? That's what this is about. It's not about because the Messiah's body is not divided. Right. It is not about the different denominations. Really, they're different doctrines. Mm -hmm. It is not about these different doctrines that claim to be. They have no proof the creation testifies to this. That's the last bit. That's the last bit. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.